Hello everyone, so uh, just doing the Nuke Proof video now, because if I don't do it now, it won't get done. So some of you will know, some of the people watching this video will know that um, I actually had a Nuke Proof Mega for a very short period of time. So I had a, a Nuke Proof Mega um, Carbon 290-2020 model year. Um, pictures now, and I'll just keep flashing pictures up so you don't have to see my face. Um, so I bought the frame only. I bought it from um, Chain Reaction back in the summer. It cost 500 quid. Um, I needed a bike because I was really short on enduro bikes. Um, I'd just broken up the bird and uh, the uh, Merino free had broken. So I needed the 29er. Uh, it seemed to come around at the right time, so um, built it up, you know, used parts off various other bikes I, I had dismantled. So it was a 12 speed bike, it had Hope rims on it, um, Fox 38 fork, carbon bars, you know, very, very, you know, typical what I'd normally sort of build, you know, Fox transfer dropper post. And I mean, overall, apart from the rear shock, it was a really well spec bike. I then rode it twice and sold it, so <laughs> I suppose. Why did I sell it? Um, so if we just cover uh, without the components, you know, the frame and everything that was supplied itself, the the headset, first of all, um, look, it had to tighten it. It was fine after that. If you wanted to replace the headset, it, it relatively easy to just knock out the old one. Um, I found the construction of the bike quite weird. Um, so the fact that you've got a carbon front end and a, uh, an aluminium rear, um, that just means there's more weight in the rear. So the... The wheel was more weighted uh, than I would have liked, which put the balance off slightly. I compensated for that with a bit of uh, suspension tweaking. Not that you should have to do that, but the suspension would have just worked better if it was the other way around. You know, if it was carbon at the back and aluminium at the front, it'd probably been a bit stronger as well. But the the big thing that got me on it was the the length, the reach. So uh, I had a large. I'm just a very tiny little bit over six foot, and uh, I just found it wasn't quite long enough for a twenty nine er. If it was a 27 and a half, I probably would have been all right. But on a 29, it just needed to be that much longer. So um, I sold it to a mate. Uh, he got a really good deal. <laughs> um, and he's slightly shorter than me, so obviously it all works out for him. Um, but yeah, I really probably should have sized up on that one. Um, obviously, by the time I'd built it and all the rest of it, the deal had finished and had already made um, an order for the bike that would replace it anyway. But it was a stopgap, you know, it lasted uh, two rides. It was fine, you know. But um, there's been a lot of uh, deals on these new proofs recently, these new proof megas. And uh, you do see the old question, you know, is it worth buying all the rest of it? So I thought, why don't we just cover one I've got here now from a mate? So this is a friend's bike. Um, it's a large, uh, so it's a new proof mega large. I think this is a 2022 model year. Uh, I might be mistaken, uh, but it was the Dior spec one uh, in aluminium. Um, I think he paid £1,700 for this. Um, and, you know, as a bike, mostly all right. Um, in terms of the original spec, uh, you get uh, Sunringle uh, rims. Uh, this is a 29, so 29 front and back. Um, you get a decent wheel setup, uh, tie setup. So you get uh, the Maxxis Asagai uh, double down casing, max grip at the front. And you get a Maxxis Minion DHR2. Um, this one's a double down again, but this one's in Max Terra. So literally exactly what you'd want in terms of um, a tie setup. I'd probably go for a, um, a, a DHR2 at the front as well, but max grip. Um, so it's definitely the right, right way around. You get these um, RockShop Dominion, uh, or no, sorry, RockShop Domain even, um, forks. Um, it's like a cheap version of a, a what was their big one? A Zeb. Um, so you get the, the 38 mil stanchions. I think it's supposed to be a heavier fork than the, um, than the more expensive <coughs> Zeb. Sorry, I've got a cough today. Um, and in terms of damper, you get like a, a compression knob. I assume that's low speed compression. And you get a rebound, again, low speed rebound. They put air in it. So it's relatively adjustable. Um, feels all right. In terms of cockpit, it's a, it's a nuke proof affair, but it's not the posh Horizon stuff. It's neutron. So <laughs> neutron bars, neutron stem. Look, you know, it seems to hold. You get the nuke proof headset. Um, again, look, I don't think there's been any problems with this one. Otherwise, other than they didn't put any grease when they. Uh, assembled this bike so i've had it apart recently and greased everything up um 
it grips. These are the nuke proof Sam Hill grips. And in terms of gear set, the drivetrain, it's largely a Shimano Dior setup, uh, 12 speed. Um, so the M80, M6100. <clears throat> but uh, you get race face cranks with these. Um, and I'm not that impressed with them. And I'll get to uh, get to why in a minute. Um, but in terms of uh, dropper post, it's a 170 mil, I think. Uh, Ascend, uh, Brandex Ascend dropper post. Uh, so it works all right. The levers are a bit naff, but uh, you could replace that with a nice hope item if you really wanted to. Um, uh, saddle, saddle is a uh, saddle. It's a new proof one. Uh, it's not the most comfortable thing in the world, but it's not bad compared to maybe saddles that are normally supplied. Um, and in terms of pedals, you don't get any. Um, in terms of chain retention, you get a little plastic one. Uh, the shock is a, a quite a basic rock shock um, super deluxe. <clears throat> um, so this has only got rebound adjustment on it, hasn't got compression, but it's an air shock. You'll probably get it 80 to 85% where you, you want it. And for most people, it'll probably be fine, to be honest. Um, and obviously, it's in this nice fetching, fetching grey colour. Um, so we've had to change a couple of things on this bike. Um, so the owner wanted um, chain retention and bash guard. So we've gone with a Unite one in a yellow colour to match the graphics. Um, unfortunately, that didn't work with the original crank set and the chain ring was bent on the original crank set as well. So uh, I don't know if that was him or how it came. Um, so what we've done is fitted a, um, a Shimano XT uh, M8100 item with a 30 tooth chain ring. Um, and what that's allowed us to do is actually push the cranks out to what the chain line should be. So at the moment, the chain on, on this is 53 mil. Um, with the rock, with the race face cranks, it was um, 49 mil, which is a bit too far in um, for boost. So I'm not quite sure why they did that. It just didn't seem to make much sense. And um, brakes. So these come with the uh, SRAM DB8 brakes, which are, quite frankly, absolutely useless. I think they literally just put them on there due to a legal requirement of needing... Uh, brakes on a bike so this has got the slx uh, m7120 brakes now so the four pot slx brakes and um, plenty powerful enough um so we've got the both the levers and the calipers um which is it's a good setup and uh disc wise so you would normally get the 200 mil shram discs so we fitted some um uber bike um uh, flat xl um discs to this 203 both front and back which has greatly increased its stopping power considerably from nothing to actually being able to stop with full anchors so and that is the, um, this this bike uh, who would it appeal to i think anybody who wants a relatively easy to set up and live with uh, enduro bike on the cheap to be honest um these were going for absolutely fantastic value so, you know, it's uh, probably a good place to start. Most of the parts are standard, so you can at least upgrade things like the fork and shock and everything else. So as an overall package uh, for the cost, um, not too bad. Just uh, budgeting for some uh, replacement items like brakes and cranks. Um, but yeah, that's literally it. Thank you.